Hi everyone, my name is Sebastian and I'm one of the developer advocates here at JetBrains. Today I have the honor of sharing a first look at Kotlin and WebAssembly with all of you. We'll briefly talk about what WebAssembly is, why we on the Kotlin team believe in WebAssembly, and we'll even see some demos of what can already be done with the WebAssembly target for Kotlin. Stick around and learn more. To understand why the Kotlin team has decided to support WebAssembly as the next compiler target, we first need to at least get an intuitive understanding of what WebAssembly is. Very basically, it can be described as a binary instruction format for a portable virtual machine. So, similar to other virtual machine languages, it is a bytecode format that is independent of the platform you want to run it on. The great thing about WebAssembly specifically is that the virtual machine to run WASM code already comes pre-packaged in your user's browser, out of the box. From a usage perspective, you can think of WebAssembly as another way of getting your program code to run in your user's browser without them having to install anything and with the goal of also making it possible for you to use the same web APIs available today. WebAssembly isn't just an extra library or some experiment either. Alongside HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, it is officially standardized by the W3C, the World Wide Web Consortium, which develops and maintains the standards that govern the web and the surrounding technologies. This is something that's really worth repeating once more. The fact that all major browsers ended up agreeing on supporting WebAssembly as the only other execution environment besides JavaScript is truly unique and something we think is going to continue to be a huge deal in the sphere of web technologies. Similar efforts had been made in the past, but failed. So we're excited to see WebAssembly prevail with WASM code already being able to run on most end user devices. And WebAssembly goes further. It also aims and is being designed to be a useful technology for server-side and serverless application development as well, with its secure runtime making it a potential alternative to the way containerization is approached. One of the overarching properties that makes WebAssembly so interesting for our team is that it has been designed from the ground up as a compilation target for other programming languages providing only low-level primitives, taking advantage of common hardware capabilities on a wide range of platforms, and delegating most higher-level features to the programming languages that compile down to WebAssembly. We think WebAssembly and Kotlin can be a powerful combination. WebAssembly also optimizes for multiple factors that are very dear to many developers building applications using web technologies, and factors that we want to address with Kotlin for WASM as well. Size, load time efficiency, and predictable speed. We'll talk about all three of these topics, at least on a very basic level, so that you get an understanding of what it is that WebAssembly excels in. On the side of binary size, instead of always having to ship a full JavaScript source code file, WASM is a binary format. That means it can just send the instructions for its virtual machine over the wire instead of having to transmit a ton of textual information. Simply said, it's just straight up smaller. The binary format used by WebAssembly is also designed in a way that can be decoded natively. That process is more than 20 times faster than parsing JavaScript, which at that point still needs to be interpreted and so on. Thanks to its design, WebAssembly can also make use of parallelization much more easily than JavaScript. Functions can be decoded and optimized in parallel, for example. Seeing how most machines are multi-core these days, that can help tremendously in actually using that processing power. That approach is also combined with other innovations like streaming compilers, because with those, modern browsers can actually compile WebAssembly faster than the file is being sent over the network, and even while it is still being downloaded. When it comes to reducing the time to interactivity of applications, these kind of optimizations are obviously a pretty big deal. Another big point about WebAssembly is its predictable speed. High-level interpreted languages like JavaScript are pretty tricky to optimize, and so were previous attempts to provide lower-level languages for the web browser, such as ASM.js. As a result, the speed of your application could vary quite a bit based on a whole number of factors. WebAssembly is quite more promising in this regard. It's a statically typed format, meaning that it's already simpler for its virtual machine to get higher performance at the baseline. Its performance also relies less on speculative optimizations, which also play a big role in JavaScript virtual machines. Not having to rely so heavily on these speculations also means that you're far less likely to get some unexpected performance degradations or de-optimizations, something that you may certainly encounter while executing JavaScript. Another part that should not be neglected is that WebAssembly has also been designed and agreed upon by all major browser vendors. Of course, different WebAssembly implementations may still have some differing performance characteristics, but we can generally expect a solid baseline of performance across all runtimes. Of course, 
there's another magical technology that already allows you to target the web with Kotlin, and that is Kotlin.js. So let's take a few moments to talk about the relationship between Kotlin.js and WASM. Because Kotlin.js already gives you the option to build your web applications in pure Kotlin, running in the browser, as well as on Node.js. You can do all that right now, today. And there's no reason to fear. It's also not going anywhere. Kotlin.js is and will be the place to go for building your web apps with Kotlin, and we continue to develop and improve Kotlin.js further. The WebAssembly target for Kotlin will simply be an additional tool in your toolbox when you're building your apps with Kotlin. In the end, that means you'll just get another choice to mix and match based on your demands. Write a user interface with Kotlin React or Compose for Web, pull in a library from the JavaScript ecosystem to take care of some domain-specific tasks, and hand off computationally expensive tasks to your Kotlin code that you've compiled to WebAssembly, just as you see fit. WebAssembly is also not done yet. It's a living standard that keeps evolving. And as the WebAssembly target for Kotlin is being developed, our team is always keeping an eye out for upcoming changes to the standard, anticipating what kind of functionality the WASM compiler for Kotlin will be able to take advantage of already, and even incorporating features that are still hidden behind feature flags or that are only available in pre-release builds of WebAssembly virtual machines. We're especially lucky to have the chance to work together with popular browser vendors, discuss with them, and also share our input on the evolution of WebAssembly in the context of working groups. Now, we're building this new compiler backend entirely from scratch because we want to take good care that it's fast to compile, performant to run, and small in size. We still have a long road ahead of us. Nevertheless, we want to take this opportunity to show you where we are at already. A glance behind the scenes, if you will, to give you an idea of what to expect in the future. For that, I will be handing you off to Slava from the Kotlin Wasm team. We'll show off a few demos for you using the WebAssembly backend the team is building. Take it away. Hi, I'm Slava Kuzmich. I'm a developer from Kotlin WebAssembly team. And while Kotlin WebAssembly is not ready to be used yet, we see that a lot of you are excited about this target and want to know what's going on. Uh, that's why I prepared a little demo project to show what Kotlin WebAssembly can do right now. In this demo, we'll be simulating uh, John Conway's Game of Life as cellular automata. It is basically a grid of cells that can be either dead or alive. And uh, these cells change their state over time based on the previous state and the previous state of surrounding cells, following simple rules. We'll get back to exact rules later. But now let's look at the code. So out of many ways to implement this game of life, we have the most simple, straightforward way where we store everything in memory in two-dimensional array. For that, we have a class Boolean grid. And uh, it is backed by a single dimensional array storage. Uh, we recalculate indices from X and Y into a single index. We have a helper uh, set and get operator functions. Those provide us with nice uh, square bracket access syntax. Next, we have fill from string functions. It takes an ASCII art string and uh, fills a portion of our grid with it. We'll see how it is used later. In the end, we have a extension inline function that basically launches a callback for every grid cell and provides it with indices and value. Next, we have our game of life model. It has two of those grids. One of them is for current state and th the other one is uh, filled for the next step. Uh, we have a get step function that iterates over grid and counts a uh, number of alive neighbors. And then we have a when expression that uh, has uh, actual rules for this game. If current cell is alive and it has two or three neighbors, it stays alive. If current cell is dead and it has exactly three neighbors, then it comes to life. Otherwise, it either stays dead or dies from either loneliness or overpopulation. Uh, as you can see, this uh, Game of Life model is only done in memory. Uh, in order to draw it on a screen, we'll need Canvas. For that, we have a class Canvas, uh, which is encapsulation of a JavaScript Canvas. Um, we get context, width, and height, and all we can do is just fill a, a rectangle with a particular value at a particular coordinates with a particular size. 
Uh, in order to do that, all of that, we have external interfaces, JS Canvas and JS Canvas Context. Uh, you may be familiar with external interfaces from Kotlin JS. In this case, they are similar but very limited version of those. Uh, these are just uh, values that came from JavaScript, and we can hold on to them, pass them around between variables and fields, and uh, give it back to JavaScript, right? We can't uh, do anything to them directly from WebAssembly. Um, and uh, to get help from JavaScript, we have external functions that take those canvases and uh, canvas contexts. As you can see, uh, as if we go to index.html, we'll see that all of those functions are implemented in JavaScript and are conveniently provided to WebAssembly on a top level. Now that we uh, have a game of life model and a canvas, let's put it together into a game of life. In game of life class, we have a canvas and then we create a model based on this canvas. And what we can do is to initialize it and make a step. To initialize it, we'll fill it with glider guns. Glider guns look like this. Uh, that's our uh, ASCII art style of uh, string that we will uh, we'll use to fill from string, agreed multiple times along the left and top sides of the screen. And finally, we'll use our code as a library for JavaScript. For that, we'll need to provide JavaScript APIs. Uh, we provide two nice functions uh, to create Game of Life from a canvas and to make a step on it. Let's see how it is used from our JavaScript. As you can see, we take our model exports, we find our canvas, we create our game of life, and then with a small time interval, we call a step. Now let's run this demo. As you can see, we have a few of our glider guns shooting gliders diagonally in a rapid succession only for them to be crushed into the walls of a canvas. So far, we've seen just a bunch of regular Kotlin code. Now let's look at WebAssembly specific parts. Let's look at our compiler output. As you may know, WebAssembly has two formats, text and binary. Text format is meant to be read by humans and binary format is what you would want to ship with your web app. Let's look at the text file. Uh, WebAssembly module has a list of functions. Uh, uh, here on the screen, we can see fill from string functions uh, from our Boolean grid. Uh, it has four parameters. Uh, then we describe uh, all of the locals in this function, and then comes uh, actual function body. Just like JVM, WebAssembly is a stack-based virtual machine. Uh, it means that instructions implicitly take their operands from the stack and put results back onto the stack for others to consume. This uh, allows for compact representation of binary. Uh, another notable thing is that WebAssembly control flow is structured. It means that constructions like loops and if statements are perfectly nested within each other. Uh, this allows uh, WebAssembly compilers to optimize code faster. Uh, in order to load uh, this code into our web page, we need JavaScript. And uh, our compiler conveniently provides the glue code for that. Let's look at it. We have a few helper functions from our runtime. Then comes uh, functions that we uh, imported from JavaScript, and uh, then we uh, instantiate our module. We call it instantiate streaming, uh, meaning that uh, we uh, compile this module as fast as we download it from the network. Can we take this JavaScript, uh, this WebAssembly, and HTML, put them onto some web server for everyone to enjoy? Uh, unfortunately, not yet. Uh, let's look at our Webpack config. As we can see in our dev server options, we launch Google Chrome with uh, experimental flags. These flags enable garbage collection in WebAssembly. 
uh, garbage collection would allow us to ship less code and uh, integrate with JavaScript uh, with less friction. Uh, it also has uh, exception handling flags that allows us to handle exceptions uh, efficiently. As you can see, we're not waiting for these proposals to be finished. We are using them as they're being designed and developed. But this would unfortunately mean that your user browsers would not have these flags enabled by default. Uh, good news is that we can compile this exact project to JavaScript using Kotlin.js. Let's try to do that. Let's go to our build file. And as we can see in WebAssembly, we are kind of piggybacking on a Kotlin JavaScript plugin. Of course, WebAssembly deserves to have its own proper part of a multi-platform plugin, but it will come in the future. Uh, and we replace a standard library with uh, WebAssembly. Now let's flip the switch back to JavaScript. And let's try to build our project. As you can see, we have the same result that is uh, supported in all the browsers. It is very likely that we will not be able to compile every single Kotlin.js project to WebAssembly just by a flip of a switch. Some of the most dynamic uh, ways that Kotlin.js and JavaScript interoperates are hard to do in WebAssembly. Uh, so if you keep your interop surface clean and simple, this would increase chances of your project being WebAssembly ready in the future. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this first look at Kotlin and WebAssembly. While we'll still take a while until you can get your hands on a first version of Kotlin Wasm, we of course invite you to stay tuned. And if you have a burning desire to help us in our quest to make Kotlin Wasm a reality, why not join our team? We're hiring developers, performance engineers, and more for our teams. At the time of publishing this video, we have three open positions, but of course, if you're watching this video in the future, that may have already changed. But even then, if you think you're a good fit for the team and the technology, the Kotlin Wasm and Kotlin JS teams will always love to hear from you, so do get in touch on jetbrains.com careers. If you want to learn more about WebAssembly itself and learn about its goals, vision, and implementation, you can check out webassembly.org, which provides a ton of information around the technology and its surrounding ecosystem. Of course, there's other ways to stay tuned as well. To get updates about Kotlin, subscribe to our newsletter, which you can find on blog.jetbrains.com slash Kotlin. Oh, and since I did say the word subscribe, feel free to also subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit the bell icon, and if you found the video interesting, maybe even leave a like. For a direct line to the team that's building the WASM target for Kotlin and community discourse about this new compiler backend, join the WebAssembly channel on the Kotlin Lang Slack. And if you haven't signed up for that one yet, do get your invitation to the shared Slack workspace at kotl.in slash Slack. We would love to have you as a part of our community and for you to share your use case with us. Well, that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much and have a nice Kotlin. Take care.